Hello and welcome to another Cheeky Scientist live training. Today we're talking about non-academic resumes. Uh, if you are interested, we have a free webinar on creating a non-academic resume. It's on April 18th, that's a Tuesday, at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. You can go to our Facebook page. It's facebook.com backslash mycheekyscientist. At the top of that page is a pinned post that will allow you to register for this free webinar on non-academic resumes. Uh, we're going to talk about non-academic resumes here in a minute and what you need to do for every bullet point in a non-academic resume so that to, to make sure that your resume, when you upload it, is actually going to be read by a human being instead of just the applicant tracking software system. Uh, one other quick note is that if you want more info on transitioning into industry in general, you can go to PhDs, with an S, PhDsGetHired.com. Um, during the webinar, we will show you our, our, web, uh, our resumes. We have uh, the, the entire format of a resume, proven templates for resumes, uh, for, specifically for PhDs who are trying to transition into industry. So if you do uh, show up to the webinar, you'll get to see the full resume, so you'll know exactly how to craft your resume to make sure that it, is, again, is going through the software and getting into a hiring manager's hand and is getting read. Now, when it comes to creating your resume, we want to talk about specifically about the bullet points here. So your resume it needs to be highly skimmable, two pages only, lots of white space. There should be a professional summary at the top, and that professional summary should have three bullet points which should highlight your biggest career accomplishments up until this point. Now, a question that we get a lot is, what, are, should, what should be in these bullet points? How are these bullet points crafted? So if we can get the camera to come over here, we'll look at these different components of a resume bullet point. So you need three things in a resume bullet point, three things. The first is a transferable skill. Each bullet point on your resume should start with a transferable skill, especially in your professional summary, which is at the top of your resume, and for all the bullet points under your work experience. Next, you should include your technical experience. And this really is the vehicle to take the reader from your transferable skills to your quantified results. You should have results. Results are very important. You need to have results-oriented bullet points, um, but you need to quantify those results. And the reason for this is because there's a lot of eye-tracking studies that have been done, um, which have, th these are scientific studies that have looked at the eye movements of hiring managers, employers, recruiters, as they read resumes, and what they find is that their eyes will pause on numbers, and they'll pause on results. So you can increase the likelihood that they're going to read your resume or that their eyes are going to stop on your results by quantifying uh, what you have achieved. Now again, why do we start with a transferable skill? Some people will say, oh, you want to start with an action verb, or they'll say you want to start with a result. If you're a PhD, you don't want to do this because for hiring managers, now realize that most hiring managers and recruiters, they don't have PhDs. They're not concerned with your publications. What they're concerned with is that uh, you are able to communicate your transferable skills. They're concerned more than anything else with your transferable skills, not your technical skills. You already have a PhD. That box is checked. They know that you have technical skills, and they know if you need to learn new technical skills, you can. Um, but what they don't know is that you can work well with a team, that you have leadership skills. They don't know if you have any product and market knowledge. These are transferable skills. Think about it this way. Whenever you're invited to an interview, they're not going to ask you to do a Western blot on their desk. They're not going to ask you to create a computer program or to create a knockout mouse. Instead, they're going to interview you and look at your transferable skills sometimes referred to as soft skills, interpersonal skills, communication skills. This is why you want to start every bullet point with a transferable skill. It's the first thing that they're looking for. And again, you want to end with that quantified result. The results you've achieved are not as important as the fact that you're able to communicate your results and that you know that communicating your results are important for non-academic jobs. This is what hiring managers, employers in general are looking for. And then finally, your technical experience is simply used as a vehicle to connect the two. So let's give a quick example of, of what I mean here. So a, a really good way to start crafting your resume is to get a bunch of note cards out, maybe three different colors of note cards, have one color for transferable skills, one for your technical experience, and one for your quantified results, and start filling out those note cards and then mixing and matching them to create the best bullet points possible. Because again, your professional summary at the top of your resume this is the one section that everyone will read when they get their hands on your resume. They might skim the rest of it, but they'll read your professional summary. So you want to make sure that you have these three components and you want to make sure you have the best bullet points possible. 
So let's, let's give an example here. A transferable skill could be as simple as strong leadership skills. It could be project management skills. It could be people management skills. We'll talk about that more later. A technical experience could simply be experience managing research professionals on collaborative projects. And then finally, a quantified result could be eight publications and $250,000 in lab grant funding. Now, we see a lot of PhDs really struggle with the results section because in academia, we're very often taught not to take credit for results, at least not individually. This has to change because your resume, it's not a peer-reviewed journal. It's a persuasive marketing document. You, you want to persuade the company that you're the best person for the position. So even if you only have a sliver of your data on a grant for your lab, you can say that your data has contributed to that amount of lab grant funding. And you should also look at any collaborative grants that your lab is on. Is on. What other results are there? Obviously your publications. Notice here we're not listing all of your publications in a works cited section. Instead we're saying eight publications. You could, you could perhaps say eight publications including a nature publication. So you can mention whatever the best one is. And again, $250,000 in lab grant funding. What are some other results? Discoveries are results. So what are some of the things that you've discovered that are related to the uh, career that you're applying for? Uh, methodologies uh, that you've optimized or new methodologies that you've created. Uh, these are results as well. Lab grant funding, presentations, uh, you know, attendance and conferences, these are all results as well. And what the results are are not as important, especially to hiring managers who don't have PhDs in, in most cases. What's important is that you are communicating results, that you know that it's important to communicate results and to quantify your results. Finally, one last note on transferable skills here at the bottom. These are some of the top transferable skills that a lot of PhDs don't think about. Number one, product and market knowledge. Okay, whether you work in a lab or if you're an engineering PhD, no matter what it is, you are using products related to your PhD. Even if you're teaching and using course materials, a company has made these products, whether it's, whether it's software, again, course materials, instrumentation, reagents, a company, kits, companies make these products. And they want to hire individuals, especially PhDs, who have used these products. And not only have you used these products, I'm willing to bet you've used their competitors' products, right? If you're working in a lab, for example, let's say you're a life science PhD, I'm guessing you've used one vendor's antibodies and you've used their competitor's vendor's antibodies to see which works best. So that means now that you don't just have product knowledge, you have market knowledge. This is very valuable to companies and you should communicate that you have experience working with their products or working with similar products. Very, very important. Um, and, and a great way to get your foot in the door at a company or to get a referral to a hiring manager is to stop ignoring the technical sales specialists the application scientists who come into your lab or come into your, uh, where you're doing your PhD, stop ignoring them and have a conversation with them, set up an informational interview. But we'll talk more about this in a, in a different training. Commercial acumen also is very important. Acumen just means your ability to make good decisions. So here it means your ability to make good decisions based on your product and market knowledge. This is a transferable skill you already have, you just need to communicate it. Right? So you have of the ability to make decisions on, going back to the previous example, which antibody to use. What were the pros and cons of each antibody? Right? This is commercial acumen and you should communicate that. Just a couple more. Current industry trends. The industry that you're in, the field that you're in, look at the overall industry, where is it heading? Again, using our example of life, life science PhDs, right? the rise of biosimilars. Read about this trend, communicate it somewhere on your resume, especially if it's relevant to the position you're applying to. And then finally, two often overlooked ones, although they're very simple, is project management and people management. Okay, you have project management skills. You're very likely juggling multiple projects in your postdoc right now, or multiple sub-projects related to your thesis right now. People management, you've had to interact with people in the lab, right? Um, other professors, as you teach, with students, whatever it might be, you have people management. Okay, so start thinking about your resume. Remember, your resume should only be two pages. If you have time on Tuesday, April 18th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, sign up for our free webinar. Again, go to our Facebook page. There's a pinned post at the top of it where you can register. It's, it's absolutely free. If you want to learn more about transitioning into a non-academic career overall, go to PhDs with an S, PhDsGetHired.com. So this takes us to the end of this training session. Uh, hopefully you've, you found some useful um, items here. 
If you have any additional questions, uh, feel free to comment on a post on this video. So I'll see you next week when we'll do another trading video on LinkedIn profiles. Thank you.